Uh, good morning. My name is Alan Nockhamson of Nockhamson PC. And with me today is uh, Jim Moransky of eBuilt, amongst other uh, companies. And I wanted to uh, introduce our audience uh, to Jim and his company, eBuilt, uh, because like, as we see more and more uh, with new construction, uh, builders um, are looking to have more sustainable, energy efficient, and socially responsible products uh, in Philadelphia. So, and, you know, eBuilt and Jim are, is one of the leaders uh, in getting that done in the city of Philadelphia. So welcome, Jim. Thanks, Alan. All right, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and eBuilt, and then we'll go through like some questions to learn a little bit more about, about green roofs and the benefits from many different perspectives. Sure, so about 2005, 2006, I really started to get full steam into real estate development and Prior to that, I worked for an electric utility doing best case scenario analysis, and I bought and sold energy through a power pool, and I was really heavily involved with energy efficiencies. And I pulled a lot of that into uh, my development project. So I started with, a, uh, my first big project was called the Ice House, and we had uh, designed in a lot of green features into the project, and it was supposed to be a green project. And as, as time went by, kind of grew, from being a green project and just said, let's try to get this lead certified. And then once we got the lead certification, then we said, oh, we're really close to silver. Then we were really close to gold. And in the end, we ended up getting lead platinum on the project. And a big part of that was we, we installed green roof over top of about 90% of the project there at the, at the ice house. So back in 2007, the uh, USGBC, the Green Building Council came out with a certification, the first certification for green roof. So I, there was five courses you had to take. I flew around the country and took the five courses in different locations to, to do it as fast as possible. I sat for the first ever GRP green roof professional exam back in 2008 and became certified. So that way we could self install our green roofs at the ice house. And then as time went by, we started doing this for our GC clients as well as other parties. Now we have a full-fledged green roof division of our company and we install a couple hundred thousand square feet of green roof a year and uh it's become a, a very nice little niche for us no i hear you and i would have to say that the ice house was a very impactful project for that part of fishtown and completely redefined that part of town so it's a great project right. too uh so why don't you tell us a little bit about what is a green roof so a green roof is essentially in the most simplistic terms it's basically like putting a yard on your roof. It's a little bit more complicated than that because you obviously can't take soil, natural garden soil, and put it on your roof as you're gonna get ponding and stuff. So it's a more intricate system that starts with a drainage mat. There's a, there's a membrane protector, then a drainage mat, then a filter fabric, and then about four to six inches of a growing media. And it's not soil, it's called growing media because it's like a shell mix, a shale mix that is very lightweight. It's not heavy like a garden soil or a yard soil. It's, uh, it's much thinner and it has great organic, organic compounds. And so it's really good as you know, great nutrients for growing plants. Um, so you put the growing media up there, then, then you uh, plant the vegetation. And the vegetation is in most cases, sedums and succulents, which are drought tolerant plants that are self-sustaining. They don't need a lot of maintenance. They also re-germinate themselves. So at the end of the year, you know, when we plant a green roof, we plant basically two plugs per square foot, and then they grow from a little tiny plug into a nice size plant in just one growing season. Then in the off season, when they shed their leaves, those re-germinate into new plants and the green roof fills in very quickly. So it's not like uh, grass where you need to continually plant seed to get it to grow or fill out your lawn. Yeah, as a city boy and someone who kills plants for a living, I, I think that's actually something that could be good for my house. <laughs> <laughs> so um, they're very hardy plants. Like I said, they're drought tolerant. They can go weeks without rain. You know, if it's the middle of August, and I mean, the more care you give your roof, the better it's going to look. But you could really, besides some general weeding, you could really do next to no maintenance on it and it would continue to survive. Um, you know, of course, now if we get into one of these Augusts that it's 
average 95 to 100 degrees and doesn't rain for three to four weeks, that's not going to be good for anything. So in a case like that, you want to get up there and spray some water on it. But it's not like you need an ongoing irrigation system or be up there with a, uh, you know, a hose bib watering the roof every day. Yeah, I was going to say, do people like actually put irrigation systems up there to, for people who don't want to have to go up to their roof and, and water it every so often? You can. It's really not necessary, especially for a residential project. On larger mm -hmm. commercial projects or multifamily projects, we'll install an irrigation system sometimes. Um, you know, part of the part of the drainage mat, it kind of looks like an egg crate, you know, you know, that you would keep in your refrigerator, you know, or you buy eggs and you open it up and it has those little pockets. Mm -hmm. The purpose of that is that, you know, the when it rains, you get a heavy rain, the green roof holds the water. And then once it gets to a certain level, it starts draining off. But those pockets, those little cups, hold the water in there and it creates like a little pond at the bottom that the roots of the plants can dip into and, and suck water from. So that will sit in there for a week or two weeks after a rain and keep moisture in the soil or in the growing media and continue to feed the plants uh, the water they need over time. So it's kind of built into the system to help it with the you know, drought, periods of drought that, uh, plants can still, still sustain. You know, we've done hundreds of green roofs now and only a few times have we installed irrigation systems. And I know that one big project we still installed on like a 15,000 square foot roof, they never turned it on and the green roof still does great. So they, they wanted it just in case and, uh, and I, I don't believe it's operated yet, so. So what are the benefits of a green roof? Well, you know, for the environment, there's a lot of benefits. So mm -hmm. you've heard of the urban heat island effect which we have here in Philadelphia, you have all this asphalt that's covering the city and all these dark areas that can absorb heat on a hot day till about 11, 12 o'clock. And then suddenly they absorbed all the heat they can, they start radiating heat up. So when you look down at Philadelphia street in August and you see that kind of like invisible cloud of, of heat coming up, that's the urban heat ion effect heating up the area. So mm -hmm. um, putting green roofs on top of a roof increases the amount of vegetation in the area. And there's a, there's a process called evapotranspiration that happens, which is that the plants take in air, and this happens with trees as well, like street trees are so important. The vegetation sucks in the water and then they release it through their, through their foliage, through the leaves, through the, you know, through the plants. And it kind of works like an outdoor air conditioner almost, where mm -hmm. the, the water sucks in and then it mists it out into the air and it cools the environment around there. So, you know, a typical roof on a hot day, on a 95 degree day, it could be 100 degrees up there, you put the green roof on and it actually cools the area up there. So, you know, the, the green roofs do great with the, uh, reducing the urban heat island effect and actually cooling the overall area. If you went over and did a, you know, a, a imaging map of heat, a heat imaging map, and you went over a project, you'd see all the streets, uh, it's one color, then you'd see a project with a green roof on top at a, at a completely different color than the rest of the imaging. So, it, uh, yeah, I was gonna say, and it probably makes it more enjoyable for like, if you're a resident up there, if it's a summer months, you know, and you have like, we see all these roof decks that go on in Philadelphia, to have a green roof, it makes it more comfortable than, especially in August when the heat's so extreme, to have a green roof, you cool it up a little bit down there. Exactly. And, you know, beyond just the cooling factor, I mean, the visibility is so much better. It's so much more attractive to, to have a rooftop that has a roof deck surrounded by a green roof instead of sitting on a roof deck and looking out onto a roof membrane that has seams and glue. And, you know, it's just, it's not really attractive, but you cover it in green roof. Now, suddenly you're you have a complete landscape area around your roof deck is much more enjoyable and a, you know much more homey feel um, than just your typical roof deck and it does make it a lot cooler and it makes it a lot more enjoyable to sit up there on a roof versus just a standard roof deck where probably by mid-july you can't even go up there anymore. that's right um, some uh, other environmental advantages one big one and the most important one to the city of philadelphia is the stormwater management abilities so you know, when you put that four to six inches of growing media up there, that essentially absorbs rains. So, you know, you get a big rain, you get a big rain that comes through, it's, it's been really dry. And then, a, you know, we have a big storm that rolls through in the middle of July and it dumps two inches of rain, you know, in an hour. You know, the city sewers get overwhelmed. They can't handle that volume. Water starts backing up. You have flooding, you have health issues, health and 
like safety issues with that water backing up. It can go into basements. It can, you know, flood your house, flood the streets. You know, especially you see that in Northern Liberties all the time where the storm right. system just can't handle the volume. With a green roof, that the water comes in, it hits the roof, and, the, and it sits in those cups and in the soil absorbs that and actually delays the release of the water out into the storm system. So as, you know, the rain's hitting, everybody else is discharging. You know, you look at those downspouts during a heavy rainstorm from this typical single family home, and it's just pouring out of the downspout, out of the sidewalk, or down into your sewer drain. And it's, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's problematic. But with a green roof, the green roof holds that. So you'll go to a project with a green roof, and it'll be the following day, and you'll still see water trickling down from the downspout because the green roof is slowly releasing that water over time. So it's a stormwater management technique. And uh, when you do that on top of a building, that's like 15,000 square feet, it has a major effect. And I know in this session, we're gonna talk a little bit about bonuses and tax credits and things like that. That's the reason why the city's willing to subsidize uh, these green roofs is because the you know, ecological advantages that, you know, environmental advantages that it produces, especially with the stormwater management. No, I hear you. And that's where we come in a lot too with these bonuses, reviewing the applicability of it and how much you're going to get out of it. And uh, no, it's always a good tool instead of going through the variance process to see what other type of bonuses, including the green roof bonus. Um, so I have a green roof, right? What can I, what can I actually plant up there? Well, the best thing is, is sedums and succulents. They're drought tolerant plants. They self germinate, they spread, they're very hardy hard to kill you know they can they can they can live through just about anything so that's you know there's there's hundreds of varieties of these plants you can get a list and look and there's all different colors and the ones that bloom in the fall and change colors in the spring and you know you get you know chives that come up and have purple flowers that that bloom in the in the spring you know so you can get any type of appearance that you like you can do patterns you know you can do rolling colors through your green roof of you know, green, red, yellow, and, you know, you could do a pattern through your roof if you wanted to get that, you know, specific with it. So, you know, but you want to really stick with sedums and succulents. We can, you, you can add to that by putting different planters in the area and then going with different types of, you know, uh, you know, trees or larger, hardier plants if you want to, but you have to be careful with the roots. You know, you want a non-invasive root structure to a plant. So if something has an invasive root structure like bamboo, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want to be planting that in a roof because it's going to be digging into your rooftop in, in no time whatsoever. It's going to find seams and dig its way in. So you keep things like that isolated to a planter. Um, you know, sedums and succulents have a non-invasive root structure. So they just basically go down and spread out sideways and they're not gonna to look to dig into your roof. So I live in Fairmont. I live in a, in a older construction home. So can I just take off the astroturf off the top of my roof and start planting? Can they go no, on any not. type of roof? Yeah, I wouldn't advise that. First thing you need to do is get a structural assessment and mm -hmm. look and see, you know, you know what your roof can hold. Um, I can tell you this is that when we, when we look at houses that we're designing for standard home versus putting a green roof on, the structural enhancements aren't great. You know, mm -hmm. like maybe you click up one size of a TJI, or maybe you're in a two by 12 without it. And then with it, you go to a TJI just for the roof level. Um, you know, so the structural enhancements for new construction is not considerable. Um, for an existing house, most times they can handle it. You know, you have to look at it and say, okay, what am I going to use this green roof for? Am I just going to put it up there for stormwater management reasons, or do I also want to access that roof? So just for stormwater management, you're looking at about 60 pounds per square foot load. You're going to add a live load onto that and use it as a roof deck as well. You're looking at 100 pounds per square foot. So those are the numbers that structural engineers typically use. Um, most houses can handle it, but if you you don't want to go up and lay a green roof, you know, the, you know, the difficult part about a green roof is like, you know, you're covering the roof. So you want to make sure that your roof has no issues. If you get a leak in your roof and it's not covered by anything, you typically walk up to the roof and look around and say, oh, there's the issue. With a green roof, it's not so easy, you know. Um, is there any type of roof that is preferable, like in terms of pitching or just like the materials to have a green roof versus not having a green roof for like a pre-existing home and or new construction? 
it, typically you're looking at a pitch of a quarter inch per foot to give it proper slope for drainage, mm -hmm. which is still considered a flat roof, you know, a quarter mm -hmm. to a half. Um, TPO is the preferred membrane for a green roof. Um, you can also do EPDM, but those two, those two are the preferred, TPO and EPDM. We use TPO 90% of the time. Um, so that is the preferred membrane. If you're going to go and you have an existing house and, and you're, gonna, you're talking about re-roofing your house, yeah. then you can go and you take off what's existing, re-roofing TPO, and then go right back with your green roof. Now, now, I think you mentioned this, but if you didn't, like how much does a green roof actually weigh? Well, it's, we all we go by pounds per square foot. That's what I was saying. Okay. Is that sixty yeah. pounds per square foot is the is the engineered load that we typically see on the green roofs. So gotcha. you know the, how much it weighs overall depends on the square footage that that's installed. Gotcha. And then in terms of costs, like you know, from a pre existing standpoint, and then how much does it add to the budget for a new construction? And I know it's probably size, but like in general. Yeah. Well, there's economies of scale. Right, because a big part of this is that you have to get a crane out to the site, and you know many times a street closure with a crane, and you know, so that's a big fixed cost that goes into it. So if you're doing a single family, one single family home, or you're doing a fifteen thousand square foot multifamily building, you still need that same crane and street closure and things. So you know, as the roof grows in size, it's it's less expensive, you know, because you get the economies of scale and you're spreading out that fixed cost across the mm -hmm. whole thing. But you're looking at anywhere from $11 to $22 a square foot for a green roof, um, depending on how intricate it gets and how much soil you need and, and, you know, access and, you know, things like that. Yeah. So as a developer and representing a developer, you have all this extra costs. I know a lot of my developers, like you, want to be socially responsible, but it comes down to dollars and cents, right? You're spending extra money. How are you going to recoup that? So let's talk about some of the government incentives there to kind of offset those costs. Uh, you mentioned previously about uh, zoning bonuses. Why don't you kind of like tell the audience a little bit about that and why <coughs> a developer may want to consider putting a green roof on a property? Sure. So about five years ago, uh, Councilwoman uh, Blondell Reynolds Brown came came to us at the BIA and said that, and I was running the Green Committee at the time, and she said that, you know, she was really interested in putting forward a package of sustainability bills that would help in development. So this green roof density bonus was one of the one of the uh, bonuses that we you know proposed for her to introduce this legislation. And originally, it was to get additional density and height. You know, height being the big trigger that got kicked out of the week, but we kept the density uh, increase. So if you agree to put on a green roof that covers 60% or more of your rooftop, then you can get a 25% density bonus, which is extremely valuable. So it doesn't sound like much, but, you know, with the Philadelphia zoning code, you know, things have changed over time. So now... It used to be that somebody wanted a two bedroom unit, they'd wanted it at 1,400 square feet or 1,500 square feet. In today's market, somebody wants a two bedroom unit, but they want it as tight as possible and the smallest size possible. So they wanted that 900 to 1,100 square feet. So unit size has decreased. Like a one bedroom used to be 800 square feet, now it's five to 600 square feet. You know, people's, the way people live and things and, and their priorities have changed and units have, have shrunk in size over time. I think it, 90% of the developers you ask will agree with that comment. But the problem is that the zoning training, the zoning code hasn't changed along with it. So the density calculations are the same as they were previously. So when you have a, when you're looking at a development and it tells you, gives you your density factor and says, okay, you can get 20 units in this building. You know, you look at it and you divide that up and suddenly you end up with all these units that two bedrooms that are 1200 or 1300 square feet and larger one bedrooms and then suddenly somebody says okay well if you put a green roof on you can increase this by 25 percent so now you can do 25 units instead of 20. now you redo your unit mix and suddenly you you come off with all these one bedrooms that are the size that you want them to be in two bedrooms that are sized appropriately because you're able to your divisors greater and you're able to divide this into more units and it really does a lot for your pro forma as a developer because, you know, let's say you hit a point of diminishing returns on rents for a two bedroom unit. And at a thousand bucks, at a thousand square feet, you can get $2,000 for that unit. But as you grow it and you see that 
at 1,100 square feet or 1,200 square feet or 1,300 square feet, your rent doesn't increase by two bucks a square foot as you go up. You get a point of diminishing returns at 1,000 square feet. So now you get to 1,200 square foot, maybe you're only getting $2,100 for the 1,200 square feet versus the, you know, 2,000 for 1,000 square feet. So that last 200 square feet, you only got a buck a square foot where everywhere else in the building you got $2 a square foot. So, no, I, yeah, I tell people all the time, focus on the amount of bedrooms, not units, because you know I, I see more and more of my clients actually going to one bedroom yes. uh, units where my clients are developing in like say Port Richmond or Fishtown. And uh, we know that a one bedroom from square foot perspective is worth a lot more than a two bedroom. That's correct, so, correct. As, yeah. as size of units, whether it's one or two bedroom goes up, the, the dollar per square foot that you get in rents goes down. You know, everybody knows that. And you're right. Typically, the unit mix, you know, is ones and studios that make up 60 to 70 percent of a project. And the two bedrooms are are small, you know, the smaller percentage of that. So the green roof density bonus is great. So what we saw when we put in this green roof density bonus that came out in the, that following year to two years, you saw all these projects that were projects that were shelved before because the numbers just didn't work. People bought it. They did full development on it. It didn't work at the time. The numbers were too tight. They couldn't finance it. They just stuck it on the shelf, said, I'll just land bank this for a while and come back and look at it later. You know, we looked at a ton of those projects over the following two years where people came out and said, okay, I was 40 units before, and now I am gonna be 10%, I mean, 25% more. I'm now at 50 units. This project now works. What's my cost for the green roof? And let's say the cost of the green roof was a 10,000 square foot building and their cost was $140,000. It was a drop in the bucket compared to what the value of their project went up by the additional density. Well, I was going to say, if you go up 10 units, even if it was like, I'm not saying it is, but even if you increase your value by $1,000 per unit, your $10,000 extra a month, in the first year, you got 120000 You almost paid for the green roof, right? That's right. That's right. We did, you know, net present value calculations and, you know, with with the green roof and without a green roof, we had a great, uh, somewhere saved back in my files, we did a presentation to the BIA a number of years back about the value of the green roof density bonus and, you know, what that really does for your numbers. Uh, and it's and it's really incredible. Yes, it's a greater upfront cost, but your numbers are that much greater in the back end and your rents are that much higher that it's it's absorbed in a year to a year and a half after after construction. So it's... It's a valuable, it's a very valuable bonus. And you see this, I think, that, I forget what it was that Ellen I said that in the year prior to the green roof density getting passed, I think two projects came with green roofs of that considerable size. And in that following year, I think 30 projects got approved with the green roof density bonus. So the war department was thrilled with it. The city was thrilled with it. And, uh, and seems to be making developers happy as well. Yeah, and I think even the variance uh, approval process, it works because especially when we're dealing with dimensional variances or even unit count variances, but like dimensional variances where there's not that much of a, a rear yard, a communal right. space for the residents. When you say, oh, I have a green roof, I have basically a little garden up, a little park on my roof, it sounds different than a, a, a cement roof deck, right? That's it correct. sounds completely different. It sounds forward thinking. And um, I think it's an easier project to sell in a lot of respects when you do have the green roof and you do need to deal with some maybe dimensional variances. That's right. Uh, You're absolutely right. It does, it does help with zoning. And another thing that's very positive is that you're, getting, you're spending this money on an amenity. You know, like a lot of these things you spend, you talk about increasing your construction cost, you know, whether it's increasing your lumber package or something. It's stuff that's hidden and you ne and you never see after the fact. With the green roof, you, you're you're spending the money and you're getting the density bonus and you're getting the returns, but you're also getting an amenity for your for your residents. You know, mm -hmm. you're getting something that makes the building better. It makes it gives it better longevity. You know, a, a, an average roof TPO roof is said to last 25 to 30 years uncovered, but when you cover it with a green roof, it doubles the life expectancy. The life expectancy goes to about 50 years because it's not taking on any ultraviolet rays anymore. And it's not taking, it insulates the roof so you don't have the expansion and contraction that you do, especially now with the extreme weather we have where in the winter, it'll be 
25 degrees and freezing one day and the next day it'll be 60 degrees. That freeze thaw effect that you get, you know, really wreaks havoc on roofs. It pulls seams apart because the membrane's tightening and then expanding and it pulls seams apart and really wreaks havoc on your roof. When the green roof covers it, it insulates the roof. It doesn't go through such extreme temperature changes. So it expands the life of the roof there. And it also, it's not exposed to foot traffic and weather and you're not getting this direct beat down on your roof at all times. That, that green roof is really doing a great job insulating that roof. Yeah, so a couple of things I hear from you. First, it's actually cheaper in the long run because you, you potentially would have to change your roof multiple times over the course of the roof's uh, lifespan if it was a typical roof versus a green roof. And then the second thing is, you know, as, as you know, in the business, if you're competing with other developers or landlords or, uh, or, you know, or people you're trying to sell properties to, we know that the people in the 20s and 30s, that sounds like a cooler thing to have a green roof, right? So if Absolutely. you're going against someone who's traditional roof versus a green roof, more likely than not, that someone in their 20s and 30s is like, oh, I got a green roof. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And listen, I'm a, I'm a rooftop snob. So you know, I walk up in a roof, I go to a project and visit it, and I walk it through and I like everything. Then we go up to the roof, we get up there and there's a fiberglass deck. And I'm just like, oh, come on, guys. You know, like, you know, you know what this would have looked like up here with a roof deck and a green roof? Like, come on, you know? And yeah. it's just, you know, it, it's, you know, it's a place that you get to. What, what, are there any tax incentives to have a roof as well, a green roof as well? Yes, well, there's the green roof tax credit now in Philadelphia as well. So if you cover 60% of your roof, uh, you can get the green roof tax credit, which is a is a dollar for dollar credit against your BPT taxes, so taxes that you pay in the city yeah. after a project's over, which is a, to most guys, it's a hidden cost. You know, it's, yeah. it's, they don't even think about it after the fact until you get done with the project, sell everything or sell the building, and then suddenly you get this big Philadelphia tax bill, and you're like, wow, I didn't even consider this in my formula. You know, it's, but when you do the green roof, then you get 50% of the cost, I believe up to $100,000 as a tax credit. So if you spend, if you're doing a 10,000 square foot multifamily building and, you know, you have to do, and you're doing a green roof and you're covering 60%, then what's nice is that for the tax credit, you get to deduct your structural enhancements. You get to deduct your membrane, your roof, which you were going to have to put on one way or the other. So at six or seven bucks a square foot, you know, you were gonna, you were gonna have that $70,000 expense either way. Now that becomes part of your tax credit and you add the green roof on to it. So let's say you end up at all in with the roof and everything else, you end up at 20 bucks a square foot and you spent $200,000, you get 50% of that, which is a hundred grand, that becomes your tax credit. So when you sell out your project or you sell the building and you get this bill in for, from the city, this BPT bill for, Hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. You simply write in, you know, green roof tax credit minus one hundred thousand dollars, and you know you pay a twenty-five thousand dollar bill instead of one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. It's a great, you know, post-completion advantage and incentive uh, that they have in place. Um, you know, there's a couple of hoops you have to jump through to get it. You have to have your structural engineer sign off on it. Mm -hmm. um, you know. There's always a chance they're going to come out and audit the project and make sure that the coverage is 60%, but that's typically just a walkthrough and a visualization. And they see, it does it look compliant? Is it not compliant? If it, you know, if there's questions, like if you have a set of plans and this whole area is said to be green roof and they get out there and it's not green roof, then they might send somebody out to measure the roof and see, do you have the 60%? But that's just comes down to following your plans. But that's really it. It's a form you send in, it gets approved, um, and then it comes back, you know, and you get the, the green roof tax credit. When the project's over and you have your cost, you fill in the cost, you do the formula, you sign it, you send it in the Department of Revenue, and they send you back your tax credit. Yeah, I know a lot of my clients use you and your company. Um, I, I, I can put it on these many hands where every time I talk to a client they're doing a project, uh, they use you guys. Now, if someone else wanted to like learn more about green roofs and learn more about like you know your services, how can they contact you? Uh, best way they can go to our website, you know, www.ebuiltinc.com. Um, on there, there's a green roof tab, which we have a separate green roof uh, website that it'll link, link you and take you right to that green roof website. And that, that explains everything on the website is basically everything we're going through here. Talks about design, shows you it's a gallery of photos that you can see. 
different options you have for a green roof. It explains the density bonus. It explains the tax credits. It explains the environmental advantages to having a green roof. Um, all of our contact info is on there. So, you know, you can email us, um, you know, shoot us an email, send us your plans. You know, if you're in pre-development, we can help you a little bit with the design. We can refer you to a good civil engineer that can help with the design for a, you know, for the density bonus. Um, and they can also do your green roof design. So, you know, we're there, we can help in pre-development. And then, uh, you know, or if you have one that's approved, ready to build, just send us the plans and, and we'll get you some pricing. Well, that's awesome. Well, I think this was really informative. I really appreciate your time and um, have a great remainder of the day. All right. Thanks, Alan. All right. Take care. All right. You too.